Hello, horror fans. Welcome back to Jay vs. Horror. I'm your host, Jay Wall, and today we're going to be talking about 2020's The Craft Legacy. I always worry when they tag movies with words like legacy. It feels like they're holding a sign in their left hand that says, here's something you love, and a sign in their right hand that says, but it's different. <laughs> so that's basically what we get here with the Craft Legacy. Now, let me start by saying I'm not the hugest fan of the original The Craft film. I think it's a great starter film for young kids getting into horror. Uh, but for me, I was 16 when that movie came out, and it didn't have a whole lot of impact like Scream, which was a major hit with audiences. I felt the original is basically iconic for Feruza Balk's uh, performance. She is great in the film. And... Uh, kind of just playing the old trope of the mean girls but this time they have powers right so the craft 2020 sticks pretty close to that it's a uh, an american supernatural horror film written and directed by zoe lister jones the film is a sequel to 1996's the craft and it stars kaylee spanny gideon uh adlin lovey simone zoe luna and we have a couple parts here for Michelle Monaghan and David Duchovny, who stopped by. Um, Jason Blum served as a producer under this, and of course it is a Blumhouse production. Okay, now, the story follows Lily, played by Kaylee Spaney, and she moves to a new town with her mother, who has met a new guy, played by David Duchovny, who's a little creepy. Uh, David Duchovny still looks great. The guy's like probably 60 years old he still <laughs> looks amazing right so it was fun to see him in a role here uh as the stepdad he, he's got a couple of sons that are just like right out of twilight these guys are doofuses and so kaylee goes on her first day of school and has just about the worst day any girl could have in school i uh, felt genuinely sorry for her character here but there's a bright side she meets some new friends and it's very interesting how in these films i mean like this was smart they put her in a situation where she needed a friend and these other three girls who we see are you know trying to have a coven but they need a fourth witch they kind of single her out they're feeling a vibe from her right so when she has this kind of really terrible day they show up for her and um, help her out. So it's, you know, a friend in need is a friend indeed. But you have to be careful about making friends like that. Anytime you make friends in a weird situation, uh, you later on find out that that person is probably not the best person to be friends with, right? Uh, it's just weird. You know, anytime some, if somebody needs something from you or you need something from them, that's not the best time to be friends. But it works out pretty good for these four girls. And I kind of like the turn this movie takes. Uh, it gets a little off the rails at times and it doesn't you know stay focused on what it's doing it has a couple different subplots going there's a guy who is bullying lily at school uh the girls are getting more powerful the more that they're together and they start uh, changing his personality similar to what happened to skeet ulrich's character uh in the first one but this does not go that direction it changes directions and we find out that this guy is harboring uh some dark secrets uh, some things that he's upset about and you know he reveals this to them because he basically has no control over his own personality anymore and once he does they feel really bad about making him reveal it and then the next day he commits suicide or so we're told right so that's one subplot because this is the consequence for their actions it's not them going after the other girls at school there is one little scene of that uh or even going after the guys really the girls are pretty uh, they're good kids. They, none of them take the turn that Feruza Balk took in the original Kraft movie, right? They all stay on course. They're friends. They make some mistakes, but uh, they work it out together. It's like a girl power type thing, right? And it, I would say that that's annoying sometimes, but it works here. You know, it seems genuine. And um, so slowly the film gives us all this information and you know story about these other things and then all of a sudden it starts to infuse david Duchovny's character towards the you know like the hour mark we start to see him more and more and we realize that he's some kind of warlock or something and he is able to take people's powers 
and singles people out when he senses that they have power, and now he's after Lily. And uh, the girls have to basically band together to defeat this evil man. Um, it sounds cheesy. It is cheesy, but I think it works in this film. I think it's a good film for young girls. Uh, now, if you're like me and you're 41 years old and you're wanting to see what you saw in 1996, you're not going to see it in this film. There is a nice little pop at the end of the movie, I would say. A, a nice little uh, nod to the original. But other than that, it you know it has the same bones. It's four girls uh, who need each other to complete this coven, and then they gain powers, and then they learn that there are consequences to using those powers. Same deal. But this time we're given a separate bad guy, so the girls don't have to turn on each other. They can work together. I know that's a little cheesy, and it's so Hollywood to write that into a movie uh, to you know give us an antagonist so we don't have to watch the girls turn on each other. Uh, but I think it works. And at least they went out and got David Duchovny. This could have been, you know, much worse. They could have gotten some guy we've never seen before to play this part, and it would have just really been bad. Duchovny does a pretty good job. He's still got charisma, you know. Uh, so he kind of works pretty good as a bad guy. Now, to be honest with you guys, I'm giving this film 5 out of 10. I thought it was slightly better than... Uh, the Blumhouse remake of Black Christmas, which I felt was absolutely terrible, even in small things like editing and the way the music was done. I mean, just that movie was terrible from start to finish, in my opinion, and very schlocky. This one works a little better. It seems a little more well-crafted, uh, to <laughs> pardon the pun there, but it also is very lacking. Now, I, I think it's a strong movie. I think if you're a 16-year-old girl... If you're a 12-year-old girl, if you're a boy, you need to watch this movie. It's going to be good, you know, for the kids. There, It has good messages in it. It presents a bad guy that's outside of their, you know, you know, it's not, they don't have to attack bullies. They don't have to attack each other. And the film is overall a strong uh, morality tale with a few scares here and there. Not even really scares, just a, a attempted jump scares. It's not that type of movie. Uh, so, yeah, I recommend it for the kids. I think they'll enjoy it a lot. I think for the kids, most of the kids, this film would probably be like a 7 or 8 out of 10. I think they'll like it a lot. It approaches some issues that other films have not in the past. And, it, you know, it's almost sad that it's under the guise of a craft film and that they have to, you know, frame it this way. But uh, overall, 5 out of 10 from Jay and a recommend for the kids. And, guys, that's all we've got this time. I can't say I overly enjoyed the craft, but, you know, they didn't make it for me. Like I said, they, they did not make this movie for 41-year-old guys. Uh, I kind of felt even weird. You know, <laughs> don't you feel weird when you're, like, uh, you hit, like, 35 or something and you watch one of the new American Pie movies or something? You know, not American Pie, but that these kids' version of that. Uh, it's weird because you're like, ha yeah, I get it, but I'm not supposed to. So uh, I kind of feel out of the loop. I kind of felt that way watching this movie. Like, uh, I don't know if the music's good, for instance. Is the music good? They're talking about uh, a couple artists that I've never heard of because I'm getting old and getting out of touch with music and stuff like that. So I had no idea. Uh, they referenced Twilight a lot, which I thought was a little schlocky. Uh, you know, that movie's 10 years ago or something, and it's been over. <laughs> and... Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't know if kids are talking about Twilight today. That's that's the kind of problems I have with watching uh, teenage movies. But instantly I understand the movie's not made for me. It's made for young girls and uh, even boys. I would suggest uh, watch this movie. They may like it a lot. That's all we got for this time, guys. And we will talk to you the next time. We've got something worth talking about. Bye. <laughs>